Hello, good people of YouTube. Real Life Sea Lord here. And last time we visited the kid, you guys seemed to really enjoy that video, and quite a few of you guys asked us to go check out something a little bit larger. So, uh, we did. Today we're visiting the USS Alabama South Dakota class battleship that's in pretty good condition. She's one of the better preserved uh, museum ships. A lot of her is open to the public. So you can see a lot of that today, hopefully, in our uh, self-guided tour of the Alabama. She's located over here in Mobile, Alabama, Mobile Bay. And of course, I highly encourage you guys to come check yourself out for yourselves in real life. Seeing it through the computer screen or your phone screen is one thing, but getting to experience these museum ships in real life is much better and it, of course, helps them out a lot more. So join us as we take a quick little tour of the Alabama today. The, uh, the hour of traffic by the tunnel kind of sucked. It, we thought it was a wreck or something, but it was just traffic, because it goes from a, like a six lane, five, four and a half lane, to a, a two lane highway, and that just, it took us an hour to go four miles. So what's interesting is that this passageway right here, um, or whatever you want to call it, this part of the deck, it's about the same width as the kid, because the Alabama, is a South Dakota class, which means that um, it's the first post-Washington Naval Treaty battleship that the U.S. Navy built. But Congress didn't want to build one a lot bigger than the treaty limits, despite the treaty being off. So that's why, like, this is so crammed, because these ships are crammed to try and still meet a 36,000 ton uh, limitation. So despite being a huge battleship, it's still quite cramped, as you'll see that on the interior as well. Oh, see, the front of the ship is very popular, and like the back where they're painting and putting in the new deck. Oh, well, that's sad. So you could go into the number three gun, no, number three turret, and then number, number uh, one turret, but they're painting the inside of the number one turret, so we can't go inside. They're doing the same to the number three turret back there, so we can't go inside any of the turrets today. But she is armed with nine 16 inch guns of a 45 caliber, so the barrels are slightly shorter than the Iowa class. There's still 16 inch guns though. They painted the uh, anchor chains as well. I think they painted the, this whole half of the ship. It came here a couple of years ago and they, uh, they had the tin and stuff set up around number one turret. And it looks like they finished the deck with a teak replacement and they painted it too.
so it's air conditioned, unlike the kid, Bethany. Well, that's where they handled the shells that would go up to the, uh, the secondary guns, the, the dual mounted five inch guns. And I mean, a lot smaller than 16 inch guns, but they, they're still pretty hefty. They probably weigh like 60 pounds. Oh, 55 pounds each. And you gotta chunk those up to the, uh, the turret in the top. 16 inch shell with a Sea Lord as size reference. It's taller than me. That, that's pretty bad. I don't know if that's bad or, or bad that it's taller than me or it's impressive that I'm almost as tall as it. I don't know which one that is. I have one of those, but it's uh... I'm trying to see which terrain it is. It should be either Springfield, Winchester, or um, uh, what was the other one? I think H&R. Oh, I can't see the uh, engraving on the receiver. Dang. All right. So this is the radio from the Nagato. So that's the radio from the, well, a radio from the Nagato. That's cool. This is, uh, is that the point in the war where the battleships, mostly the Japanese Navy, were just used for basically shore, um, shore batteries. So they didn't have enough fuel to do anything with them. So they were basically worthless at that point. Well, not basically worthless. Their roles were extremely limited at that point. I love this fan, though, by the way, a lot. It's not blue. What do you mean it's not blue? It's red. Yes, it's red. But it says blue. There's probably a very good reason for that. Oh yeah, this is this is where the AC is coming from, and it's going to the rest of the ship from here. Oh nope. That was, that was it. That's where the AC was. Well, the thing is, as, as long as it isn't here, it's still a lot better here than it is yeah. outside. Oh god. He spooked me. <laughs> I forgot they actually have mannequins here, so I came around the corner and I just saw this dude staring at me like glass eyed and stuff. So that, uh, did, did, did I jump? Yeah. Oh my. Oh, there's a Butterfingers in the post office. <laughs> Figure it out here, Chad. Uh huh. Okay. I didn't realize they condensed it. They oh. did it on film and then it got to the boat and they. Right. They didn't realize yeah. that. Navigator stores. Need to bust out a sextant so where you'd come get it from. Oh, this is where they put the 20 millimeter ammunition together in the belts. And then I guess it's where they wound it up into the uh, magazines or the whatever you want to call those cases. Yeah, drum magazines. 60 round, that's all they, well, I guess it is 20 millimeters, it's a big round. It's the mail room. You can go in there. Here's a better view of the post office. One of these doors are going to open one of these days. <laughs> no, I think, that, I think they've child proofed the battleship. So, how would they get the mail off of the ship? I guess they gave it to like a supply ship that they would resupply from and it would take it back to port and then they would, uh, then they would send it via the post office there. Making my, way. making my way downtown. It's the bar bet. Like you can't. This is like like a lot of still stuff. If you like, um, you know, hit it, it'll vibrate. This this just doesn't. But I think it's it's not just still. I think it's like it's composite, obviously. But yeah. That is solid. But then you just like scratches like this, and it's like, what in the world did this? Like, how, how did that scratch this stuff? Unless that's just the paint. So he didn't scare me. Stop judging him, he's just made that way. Junior NCO. Yep, more about that um, compression we were talking about, conden condensation, condensing, we were talking about earlier. Another thing too is that like as the war went on, uh, they had to keep putting more and more A on the ships because um, naval aviation was becoming such a big part of the Pacific War. 
So you put more and more AA guns on the ship, you need more and more AA crews, so you need more and more men on the boat. So even though when it started out, it was pretty compact, you throw on you know, a dozen more AA mounts, it's probably like, what, three or four guys a mount, so that's another 40, 50 guys you gotta put on, and the ammunition for the guns, and the parts for the guns, so, yeah, it was pretty sardine -y in here. Senior berthing's a little bit better. If you want to take a look at that. They had a little bit more space to themselves, not much. Look inside. Look how small the uniforms are too. Well, one thing I heard is that after the war, of course, most of the men you know, took their uniforms home with them. And then the ones that the museums can get their hands on, what's left over, which are usually the ones that were way too small. That's why a lot of the uniforms and such in these museums are teeny tiny. Like people were smaller back in the day, but also uh, that's just what the museum could get that's like genuine and not reproduction. Just the surplus stuff. Uh, you have a display dedicated to the glorious 40 millimeter Bofors, glorious Swedish Bofors. Some of the best AA guns in game and in real life at the time period. You have a whole Orlik in here. It was also Swiss. The Swiss was not, I didn't know the Orlikin was Swiss. I guess with the name like Orlikin, I should have two and two together. But um, the Swiss just must not like aircraft flying over their country, which I can't blame them. You learn something every day, children. Oh, look, look at the Bofor barrels. You gotta imagine how fast these things got worn out. These are 40 millimeter shells going through it. So that's a lot of pressure and heat being transferred to the barrel. The warrant officer's mess. And that's their pantry. I mean, this is the CIC. Look at that. That's neat. It's actually kind of smaller than I just, uh, expected. It's not that much bigger than the one on the kid, really. Maybe double the size. But again, that comes with the whole. It's a very condensed battleship design. When required, the activities of the CIC also the Damage control center. This room's almost as big as the CIC. Well, I guess it's a, very, it's a very important room, too. It's what stops the ship from burning up or sinking. <coughs> Whew. So, yeah, these are the... Oh, right there. I was, I was trying to read to make sure what it was before I talked. This is the steam turbines. It would heat up the water, then the steam would turn these turbines, and that's what produced power for the ship. And, like, I think it's funny that, like, the pinnacle of human engineering still today is we just make water really, really, really hot. It uses it to spin fans. It's just how do we do it? Went from uh, coal to oil, now nuclear power and diesel, which Gotta make the water hot. AC generator. It's not that AC. It it's, it's not that AC, Bethany. No. Like electricity AC. No. See, imagine you're stuck down here. It, it, it's loud, it's hot, and then you're being shot at by the Japanese. That's, um, this is like one of the places I definitely wouldn't want to be. Like this and like a turret sitting on all those shells and powder. Cause you're, we're down pretty deep in the ship if it, uh, if it's uh, capsized. So which is what happened at Pearl Harbor. A lot of the sailors didn't make it out of Pearl Harbor were down at the bottom of the ship in the engine rooms and such. the powder flats for the uh, five inch guns. So you would have the, uh... okay, I'm not sure. I assume you would have the powder and bag, you put it in the casings like you see down there. Then I'd assume you send it out and up the hoist and they would uh, marry it to the shell, which is what you see right there, down, the blue thing, there we go. And that's what they were doing in the shell handling room. And then you send it up to the turret because you might need, you know, High explosives, AP, star shells, whatever. So I'm assuming you, this is where you put the powder into the casing and then the casing into the 
hoist, you would zip it up to the handling room. That's how I think they work. I don't know for sure. That's how I think. No, it's not, but let's see. Go look at that's how thick the barb that is. This is inside the bar bed of the 16 of the big 16 inch guns. So yeah. And I think this is the only museum ship that has a bar bed that's this, this accessible. They had to cut into it a lot and open it up. Let's go down. Let's see upstairs here. So yeah, this is the bottom of the um, barbette down there. So that's a, the 16 inch turrets on top of us with the, the three guns. And you see those little like, can't remember what those are called, those uh, openings right there. On the other side, there's the uh, powder flats for the 16 inch powder. And they would pass through the powder bags and you would then put the powder bags into those powder hoists like you see right there. And then, the hoist would send the powder up to the 16 inch guns in the turret where the crew would uh, load the shell and then they would load the powder into the uh, breech, close the breech and then fire the gun. And then you try to do all, all that again in about 30-ish seconds in order to keep up your rate of fire. It's very important to keep the powder away from everything else, anything that could spark a fire because that's how you get a, um, uh, uh, turret deton uh, magazine detonations how you lose ships and powder is very sensitive you don't want to jostle it around too much um, even though it's you know they've been doing this for years it's supposed to be very safe but accidents can still happen like with the Iowa's turret this is sick bay jam between two of the turrets that's funny so you're the medical professional Bethany what is any of this stuff Okay, well, um, well, this is a blood pressure. I'm pretty sure it was probably... Nope. It's... Oh, it's blood pressure. I was correct. That's blood pressure. That's also blood pressure. Mnemonic... Mnemonothorax apparatus. So uh, of these look like dental tools. The treatment of tuberculosis there was theore theoretical treatment to induce rest for the affected organ. Hmm. Exposure to fresh air and reinforced nourishment. Oh, so it's like it breathes for them? So it's like a, uh, what was the thing that people are getting on during COVID so much? Um, ventilator, yeah. So it's like a old school ventilator. Oh my gosh, it's some loops, some old looking loops. I have those. There you go. So what, what gauge needle is that in your medical professional opinion? I use 27 and 25. Now, that looks like it's probably 27 or 25. Um, that's a big one. Well, not huge, <laughs> not huge, but that's pretty. Like, I can see inside that. That's another sandwich, too. I don't know if it's going to come up well on the camera, but like, oh, look at this Why thing back here. Dang. <laughs> well, the only thing is, like, needles that they were still used today, correct? Oh, yeah. Yeah. But I don't know what that, like, that. I don't know what this one, yeah, he said, it looks like it's covered in a little bit I of... I see the blood or, like, they, like, restained it and someone goofed up. But, uh... Yeah, you yeah. think they restained that down there too? No, <laughs> that's probably, yeah. Oh, look, they didn't use bags, they used uh, bottles. Yeah, that's right, they used the uh, glass bottles for the, uh, yeah. for the um, IVs. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Look at the uh, x ray What's up? Did you find it? Is it the dental office? It's the dental office. Hey, look, everything was in the dental So for those of you that don't know, my sister's a dental hygienist. And you can go in there. <laughs> she looked down and saw the stack. I got a little excited. And she's still just... Oh my lord, I would not go to the dentist if that's what your dental chair looked like. Like today it's all nice and like, you know, white and plasticky and stuff. That just looks like it's out of Atomic Heart. Look how long their mirror is. What are they trying to see? Their esophagus? Golly. Like look at the chair, look at the arms of the chair and stuff. It's oh look like, at their nitrous oxide. Uh, that's that thing back there. That two wing, one's for the orchestra, one's for the nitrous. What? Show them the chair. Like look at the chair. That looks like straight up like atomic heart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know. Mm -hmm. 
That's all manual, baby. Look at this over here. Is that is that more or is that? I should have a dental chair. I don't really see any hygiene. Um, I'll see a bunch of uh, dental tools. It says I can provide a complete dental care. You could be a dental officer, Bethany. Mm. I mean, they had other duties too, obviously. Yeah. Oh, wow, look at those old x ray machines. Yes. Well, not only that, but the uh, actual dental x rays. Look how tiny those are. Wow, they took vertical bite wings. Dang. That's crazy. What does that mean? It's a different the way that it's turned. Oh, okay. I don't know what that means. They got some bone loss up in there. Golly, they need to be flossing. <laughs> <laughs> what now? Look at that. What's that? It's a little, little a dental, like... A oh, dental record? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, cool. Look at that. Look at all the radios. Wow. I do wonder if the ship was air-conditioned when it was in service. Probably not. It's probably just ventilated. Ah, so come here. So this is what I was talking about. And the look at this step. <laughs> you gotta be high knee and over. So this is the, the gousing equipment. This is what I was talking about in Wood Warships that um that we could have to counter the acoustic homing torpedoes or the magnetic used to be magne uh, magnetic torpedoes. And degaussing was a method used to uh, disable magnetic triggers on sea mines. Instead of using damage con for everything under the sun, you could have a, add a special degaussing consumable that would disable the magnetic triggers on the, on the uh, torpedo heads. Oh, this, I think these are the, oh yeah. That is most definitely the five inch ammunition hoist. That is solid. What? <laughs> These are the, uh, if you've ever seen Under Siege, these are the, uh, the rails that they carry, like the 16 inch guns, the uh, 16 inch guns, the 16 inch shells and other cargo ones throughout the ship because those shells weigh thousands of pounds each. You would attach this to um, the, the conveyor and you would roll it on throughout here so you don't have to, you know, have a bunch of dudes carrying a 16 inch shell like in a, like in Battleship. There's also, also the Battleship where they did film um, Under Siege on. So this is technically the Missouri as well, if that's the ship from the movie. And that's where dad would work because he was a, I don't know if he's the chief engineer. Engineer's office. Now dad got the good setup. Oh yeah, the dude in charge of making sure the ship's functioning right mechanically. Right. I'll look at the uh, mixer. Make some serious bread with that. Here's the cruise, the cruise galley. All right, man, it's getting late. Did you get that? Oh, that spooked the shiz out of me. 2,500 crewmen, three meals a day. Look at the, I know, the oxygen masks. Golly, can you imagine? Then you're trying to plug the holes with these wooden blocks. The holes are made in the hole. Dog locker. So this speed the bridge. Oh. how thick the conning tower was. It's supposed to eat battleship caliber guns, protect everyone in the inside the, the con, conning tower. Oh. It is a uh, compact, you see it? That's the view out of the battle bridge, if it'll even focus. There we go. Let's 
And that's the interior of it. Not a lot of room. Because you need all the armor. Get out of this. Oh. It's thicker than me. Or the sailing bridge. When you aren't in combat, you have a slightly more roomy sailing bridge. I think the other side you can see through the uh, door a little bit better. Look at the view of the gulf. Your view of the balance. So again, so these ships are considered to be pretty, I mean, they're, they're, these are big ships in game. The South Dakotas, the Alabama, the Massachusetts. But uh, it's pretty big in real life. So if you look at here too, this ship was also used for the Indianapolis movie with Nicolas Cage. And like one of the funniest things is that they're talking about like the guns and stuff and the danger of submarines. Like, oh yeah, before, before submarines to the surface, we can uh, use the eight inch guns on them. And then they show those things, which uh, are 16 inch guns. Kind of kind of bigger than eight inch guns. <laughs> I thought the movie overall was decent. I just thought that was freaking hilarious. I mean, any, any Nicolas Cage movie is immediately like a, at least a C rating in my book. Ow! I just ate that to my, to my shoulder blade. Look at all the five inch, they really just crammed six, I'm sorry, no, five five inch mounts per side on the, on the South Dakota class and said, yeah, no, it'll fit. <laughs> That's funny because the, uh, they pretty much did the same thing with the uh, Atlanta um, in her class. They just kept bolting five inch mounts on it until until they're like, yeah, no, actually, we actually can't put any more. The ship will actually topple over if the seas get even a little bit choppy. So, yeah. And it's interesting how much they just crammed on these ships. And then we've been to the Wisconsin before, which is an Iowa class, which those things are massive compared to this thing. Because this is a big ship, don't get me wrong. The Iowas are just huge. A lot more roomy, too, a lot more comfortable to be stationed on. So again, talking about the game scale, like these things are you know, destroyer guns in game. These things are huge in real life. Look at that. It's several Mies. Yeah, you appreciate stuff a lot more when you come check it out in real life, which I encourage you all to do. And that's why I can't go in the number three turret right now because uh, they're working on the teak deck decking and I think painting the turrets too. So fortunately we can't show you guys that. And the number two turret, like I said earlier, they are um, painting the interior of it. So hope, maybe we'll come back and check those out, hopefully at a later time. So guys, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video, enjoyed our tour of the Alabama. Again, I highly encourage you guys to come check her out for yourself here in Mobile, Alabama and Mobile Bay. They're open up 364 days out of the year, eight to five, I do believe. So hope you guys enjoyed. If you want to see more of these museum ships, let me know in the comments down below and also throw the names of the ships that you want us to check out in the comments as well. Hope you guys have a wonderful Sunday, a wonderful rest of your week. Hope to catch you guys in the next one. I do not record me. Why do you, why'd you bring a jacket? Hmm? It's a hundred degrees outside, literally a hundred degrees. So, oh, this is a new teak flooring they're, they're putting in. That looks nice. Like that, that's nicer than the flooring in my house. So we've been here for about 25 minutes so far. We were supposed to get here according to the GPS, get to the ship at 1229. But then there's a wreck in the tunnel, which is the only way to get to the ship from this, uh, like this side of I-10. Like look on the GPS, that's the, no GPS. Ships right there. And then this is the traffic that we gotta get through. So, yeah. Dang, this is a lot of traffic. Would be a shame if I just. Good for you!